we're going to start part two of this video by talking about the terrestrial setup for your red eft and then we'll get into detail about the larva eastern newt setup now what we're going to need in order to set up a habitat for your red eft is actually quite simple the best thing to do is use a pet carrier something kind of small because you're not going to need a lot of space for your red eft and you're going to need a substrate that is able to hold moisture. One of the better substrates you can use is coconut fiber, which is available in a lot of pet stores. It holds a lot of moisture and provides a soft, suitable substrate for your animal. It's also a good idea to mix the coconut fiber with organic soil of some sort that does not contain any chemicals or fertilizers or any acidic substrates within it, such as sphagnum moss. And because we're trying to create a naturalistic habitat for our animal, leaf litter is another key aspect of how we can closely mimic what your animal would experience in the wild. Leaf litter is present everywhere on the forest floor in the natural habitat in which your red eft would live in. So, because we want to use this in our setup, we have to find a safe alternative. And the most common alternative is dried oak leaves, which we can easily obtain from our local pet store. Dried oak leaves are commonly used in a lot of setups for poison dart frogs and salamanders. For a setup like this, you're also going to need an object that your animals can use to hide under and feel safe and secure. A good object to use would be cork bark. It's available in most pet stores and is a widely used piece of wood and is meant to be used for amphibians from poison dart frogs to salamanders alike. And even though your red eft is terrestrial, it's a good idea to have a shallow water bowl for your newt. Even though they are hydrophobic, you can often get them to eat in your water bowl depending on the food that you present to it, such as live blackworms. Just make sure that the amount of water in the bowl is shallow enough because your red eft is completely terrestrial and they are hydrophobic. They can drown in water. For a terrestrial setup such as this, just make sure that you keep your enclosure moist, not wet, but moist, by spraying or misting your tank with water at a regular basis. That way your animal does not dry out because even though your animal is terrestrial, their habitat is a moist environment. Now, for your larva, it's actually much easier than the red eft because it requires basically the same principles as your adult would require for their setup. The only difference is that you have to make sure that when the time comes, your larva is able to move onto a base of land present within the habitat once it's time for them to morph and become terrestrial. So, you can use a heavily planted setup, or if you're going to use a small pet carrier, which is fine too, just add some java moss or anacris, just enough plants that they'll feel secure, and make sure you keep up with water changes, since they are more susceptible to temperature changes and water quality changes than the adults. As your larva grows, you're going to notice that it will grow its front legs first, its back legs last, and as it grows larger from there, as the time comes for it to morph into the terrestrial red eft, you'll start noticing its gills start to shrink. And at that point, you may notice it even gulping for air as its lungs develop. And once it is time, it will emerge onto land. And at that point, you will have to move it into a terrestrial setup in the same manner that we would set up 
a habitat for your red eft. Now we're going to talk about feeding. We're going to start with the eastern newt adult and talk about a few different foods that are suitable and healthy for your adult newt. So when it comes to feeding your newt of any life stage, it is always best to vary your animal's diet so that they obtain as many nutrients as possible. There are plenty of things that are suitable for your adult newt. However, there are quite a few things that I've noticed that people try to feed their animal that are not suitable, and we're going to go over those things now. Among some of the most common foods you can acquire from your local pet store would be frozen bloodworms and frozen brine shrimp. Frozen bloodworms and frozen brine shrimp are fairly inexpensive and very easy to feed to your adults. They will thaw out in the water, just feed them the appropriate amount of food depending on how many adults you have, and the thawed food will float to the bottom of the water, and the adults will actively seek out the food. Another good choice of food for your newt would be worms, from earthworms to night crawlers. You should cut them to the appropriate size so that your newt can eat and swallow them. Just be careful when selecting worms though. It is easy to go to a bait shop and obtain night crawlers and red wigglers. However, red wigglers can be refused by your animal because when they are cut, they produce a foul smelling odor. It is also easy to go outside and collect earthworms or night crawlers. Just make sure you collect them from an area where the soil doesn't contain any contaminants. Another good food source are live blackworms. They are definitely not as common as earthworms or your frozen brine shrimp or bloodworms, and they are perishable. Bigger chain pet stores do not carry black worms, so you may need to order them by mail or go to a smaller mom and pop pet store. And because we're talking about the food that adults can eat, it's fair to talk about the food that larvae can eat because it's pretty similar. Even though the foods that we can use for our larva newt are similar to the adult, we have to start from when your larva first emerges from the egg. When your larval newt hatches from its egg, it may not eat immediately as it's still absorbing the yolk from the egg. However, after about a day or two, it will be necessary to feed your larval newt. At this point, your newt will only be going after live food. And this is where it gets a little tricky because we have to find something that's the appropriate size for your animal to be able to eat for how small it is. Common food sources for larval newts include newly hatched brine shrimp and daphnia. Newly hatched brine shrimp are a good food source for your larva, but there's a few things that we have to take note of. Newly hatched brine shrimp is not always easy to obtain. They are not usually available in big chain pet stores such as PetSmart and Petco. However, you can order them online or purchase them from a smaller mom and pop pet shop. Another thing we have to pay close attention to is any leftover uneaten brine shrimp. Since they are a saltwater animal, they will eventually die in your setup and grow fungus and foul your water. So you will have to make the appropriate water changes to keep your water quality good. We have to make sure we try to minimize the amount of leftover eggshells from the newly hatched brine shrimp that go into your setup with your larva. Your larva can choke on eggshells, potentially, or they also can't digest the eggshells. And the last and probably obvious thing that we should make note is that since brine shrimp are hatched in salt water, when we feed them to our larva, you are adding salt to your water with your larva setup. So just make sure we feed the appropriate amount of brine shrimp to your larva to keep the salt content down. And again, just keep up with the water changes to keep our fresh water quality good. 